Welcome folks, I'm Kyle Brock, filmmaker and writer. In this web series, I'm gonna track my film, The Gut Movie, as I attempt to independently create and release a successful film project, all the way from pre-production and funding to cinema and online release, and hopefully, and you'll see if you stick around, Netflix. If you're new here, why not go ahead and subscribe so you don't miss out on the fun. Are you ready? Let's go. Let's talk about funding your own film. In 2017, I wanted to have a big year, like the biggest, most riskiest year of my life. I wanted to achieve two things. I wanted to write and direct and star in a documentary all about the gut and the microbiome. And number two, I wanted to release that film to a sold out crowd, to a sold out audience in the town where I was born, Adelaide, South Australia. That was it. Those two things were my goals at the start of 2017. And with some serious perseverance, I managed to actually achieve those things and a whole lot more. For instance, an entirely sold out Australian tour for the film in not just one, but 17 different locations. What? Hey, we're here at the uh, world premiere of the Gut Movie. We're just organizing hey. everybody. Aren't you? Yes. We've got 750 people. Hey guys! We've also got a line this way. Aubrey, and we've got a sell out 200 people cinema. Um, and we've got a packed out cinema, almost 500 people. Now I want this film on Netflix in North America. Do you think I can do it? Now before we go any further, let's jump back to the logistics of this project. A lot of people don't actually know, but I self-funded this entire film from start to finish. I paid everybody from the camera operator to the sound mixer, to my African tour manager, to the Namibian Film Commission, to a myriad of airlines for excess baggage fees, and the list goes on and on. At the beginning, I didn't really know how much this film was going to cost, but I knew that I needed a lot of cash if I was going to get this thing sorted without going to a bank asking for a loan. I started off with zero dollars in my budget. That's right, zero, 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 zero. How the heck can you make a film with zero dollars? So I was sitting at home alone one day having a think about my goals for the year and I had an epiphany. I decided that the best way to fund the project was to create an online event that was something like a precursor to the actual film itself, an event where I could sort of kill two birds with one stone, conduct some interviews related to the film's topic of the gut microbiome and provide a seriously high value product which people could buy afterwards. The Gut Healing Summit investigated the optimal microbiome theory and much more. I interviewed around 16 different leading experts in the field of the gut and the microbiome, poking and prodding around this topic in a way that really helped me set the groundwork for the eventual film. Doing these interviews was a fantastic way to refine the story of the gut movie because I got to learn about all the different research and different theories going on in and around that topic at the moment. I was able to probe deeper into the mysteries of the microbiome in a way that really set up my whole intention for the film. Of course, at the same time as conducting these interviews, I was also recording them on video for an eventual online release. And this is the thing, I think in a traditional model, people would be a little hesitant to do something like this because they'd worry that they'd release all their spoilers to the world and nobody would see the actual film itself. But I found that this reluctance is unwarranted. These interviews for the summit were long, largely unedited, um, in depth, like 45 minutes long to an hour long discussions on gut health. In short, they were not something that you would put in the doco except for some small excerpts of information from them. I also kept a few key interviewees up my sleeve so that we could generate some new interest and color in the film trailer when we released that. You know, fresh faces and a fresh message, so to speak. <clears throat> so the online event aired for free over uh, four days with 24 hours to watch diff uh, four different interviews at a time uh, to access these interviews permanently, download them, plus get access to the transcripts, audio files, plus a stack of bonuses. Uh, viewers had to purchase lifetime access to the summit. The key though is that the 
I provided a very valuable, impactful product for my audience, which was well underpriced at only 80 bucks during the event and 130 after. Long story short, I ended up raising around $50,000 from this online event, all of which, plus some more, which I'll tell you about in an upcoming episode, went directly into the film budget. So some of you may be thinking, I know I don't have a doco about the gut microbiome. In fact, my film is a dramatic feature, not a doco at all. That's totally fine. I encourage you to do and think about is how you can emulate what I did with your specific audience. Have a think about who your audience will be for the film. For instance, I was one of the lead characters in a feature film for the LGBT community. And just off the top of my head, I can think about several ways to fund such a film. For instance, you could throw an LGBT exclusive party or event or film screening. Your film might be about depression and mental illness as a main thread. Uh, could you approach a charity or mental health organization to help arrange funding for your project? Could you ask influencers in the community to pr promote your project to their audience? And at the very least, could you film significant excerpts from your script, turn it into a trailer and a campaign for Kickstarter? Guys, with the advent of YouTube and other social media channels, the traditional barriers to attracting an audience out of thin air have been removed. You as the filmmaker are in the driver's seat. Now is the best time in history to be a filmmaker. There are a myriad of ways to attract people and subsequently to attract funds to get your project underway. So let's break it down into three steps. Number one, work out how much money you need for your film's budget. This is important because if you run out of money, like I did with the gut movie halfway through, it's going to cause you a lot of stress, trust me. <laughs> Plus, when you have an image in your mind on the exact figure of what you need, you're more likely to attract that figure into your bank account through your hard work. Number two, work out how you can leverage the content of your film into a pre-film product, or as I like to call it, a PFP, i.e. an online or in-person event. With the gut movie, I did the gut healing summit and raised $50,000 for my film. Can you do an online summit about your film's topic? If it's a doco on meditation or yoga, for instance, can you run a massive meditation and yoga event in person or online? If your film is a dramatic feature about, I don't know, a parkour, can you interview all the best parkour athletes in the world, long format, in depth and create an educational video series out of it. The opportunities here are endless. And you know, something I didn't expect with the Gut Healing Summit was the fact that the event acted as an incredible way to increase awareness and interest about my upcoming film project in the super early days of marketing. I had countless people tell me that they actually started following me after the summit just in anticipation for the film. Thus, you know, the, the Gut Healing Summit was crucial in determining the gut movie's overall success. Number three, relationships. Who do you know or need to know in order to assist getting funding for your film? Is it a charity? Is it a research team for your doco? Is it a brand with a product which you want to place at the heart of your film's story, i.e. a certain brand of beer or a certain brand of parkour shoe? In the, I don't know, in the gut movie, we worked closely with um, Smart DNA, a molecular genetic, genetics testing company who provided us with microbiome testing kits for the film, which usually come at a significantly high cost. They also helped uh, promote the film to their practitioners around Australia, who then promoted the film to their clients. Um, it, was, it was a really great relationship, but you have to remember that these relationships need to be bi-directional in that you should be offering great value to whoever comes on board. It needs to be um, mutually beneficial. And of course, who else do you need to know? Your audience, you need to know what your audience want to see, you need to know their pain points, you need to be able to fix those, or you need to be able to emote a certain emotion based on those pain points. For instance, if you're doing a film about mental health, depression and anxiety, you need to know those topics very well so that you can hit those points um, and make your film relatable, comprehensive and actionable, and number one, emotive. You only need one great film, commercially and critically successful, to kick off a career in which every single film that follows can attract huge attention and funding. So let's get that first one off the ground. In the next episode of A Journey to Netflix, we'll go over the logistics of organizing your film from 
crew to interviewees slash actors and even filming in different countries. I'll have some special guests chiming in with their wisdom and experience on uh, the Gut Movie Project to offer you some very priceless tips and tidbits. So a final request from me guys, if you love this episode or you found it helpful, please subscribe to my channel, like the video and let us know in the comments below what you want to see in the next episode and we will cover it. I'm Kyle Brock and I will see you then.